car audio, etc. is proudly supported by Auto Sound and Security. <laughs> Good morning guys, how's it going? James here from Caradio Citra. Freaking awesome day outside. Beautiful, sunny, hot, but it's not so hot that we're all like, you know, sweating buckets today. So it's a nice, nice temperature. Um, today we have this uh, Toyota Hilux Surf. It is a 1993 and we're doing like a whole day's worth of work on it. Grant is doing an alarm system to it and I'm doing a stereo. I'm doing an Alpine UTE 62 EBT and two sets of Alpine Type R coaxials. So these cars come factory with little four inches uh, in these pods here. Oh, there's one. What's it? Oh, it's got a Kenwood, look at that. Uh, factory with four inches in this location and over there, right where my finger is there. And they usually sound terrible. And the rear speakers are in the back of the boot here on the in those grills on the sides. So all in all, these cars come with absolutely terribly designed sound systems and no matter what you do in any of those locations, it never really sounds that good. So um, someone has already gone ahead and put some sixes in the doors, which is okay. It's not how I would have done them. I have done these tests before and normally I put them down a bit lower just because I think um, from memory it works a bit better with being able to secure the screws to the metal. But that's okay, I'm going to try and put the Type R coaxials in there. And the other thing I'm going to try and do is put them in the back of the rear uh, in the bottom of the rear doors here we'll see how that goes it's been a while since we've done some six inch speakers in the rear doors of one of these surfs because normally what we do is put two type r six by nines in a triangular box pressed up against the back of the rear seat firing backwards and that normally sounds really really good and provides the vehicle with some much needed bass but this guy's got a lot of uh, gear in his boot it's it's his fishing truck he's even got like fishing rod racks and everything up there so having all that gear in the boot would make it, you know, pointless having speakers back there as well because it would all just get, you know, inhaled by the equipment in the way. So that's what I'm trying to do today. I'm going to be trying to work around Grant while he's doing his alarm system. And yeah, hopefully this all goes well. So this video might end up being a wee bit choppy, guys, just because it's uh, quite a uh, interesting and complex job. It's going to have a lot of, you know, time spent on me thinking about how I want to do things. And also because I'm working around Grant at the same time, we're both going to be like jumping from one side of the vehicle to the other all day long. So it might seem a wee bit all over the place. I'm not going to do time lapses because I haven't got the um, time to set them up for each one but what I'm gonna do is sort of do it step by step and I'll, I'll do my best basically you know first step is definitely to get the radio out I'm just gonna have to try and do what I can wherever grind is not working at the time so what you're gonna work mostly in this area aren't you you're gonna work mostly in this area yeah right okay so I need to be doing this door now great okay couple of issues with this door guys I've taken the speaker out firstly the window motor is right there, there's metal, whoever did this install, like they figured out where our existing hole was and then they cut a hole to kind of match it, but they didn't cut any actual metal. Also, the that is there. So that's gonna be an issue. Because the Type R's that we've got are a lot bulkier on the back than these Sony's. Like the Sony's have quite a wide magnet, but a very shallow mount and very thin little basket. The Type R's, it's kind of the opposite. They have a small magnet, but they've got quite a beefy chassis. Um, so small little magnet, but a thick, plasticky, meaty thing, and it's deeper as well. So I'm thinking on actually all four of the doors, I'm gonna have to space them out a wee bit, either with some little carpeted rings or if I can manage to get something in between somewhere. But um, yeah, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna run a new set of wires through because I'm unhappy with the wiring in this car. It's not up to my standards. So I'm gonna run some new wires through and then basically just start trying to figure out how I wanna mount this speaker in here. I'm definitely gonna have to open up this hole a bit more. Probably I'm gonna aim to open up to the right and down a wee bit to get it away from the motor and the, uh, what do you call this part, Grant? The, the door stay or, the door stay or something. Try and get it away from those, get the speaker down into the right a wee bit. It'll be on a carpeted pod because I think there's a lot less depth in this. Well, not a lot, but there's about a centimetre's difference in depth from the fr um, in the front door than there is in the back. But anyway, I've got my work cut out for me. We'll see how we go. Now the door stays going to end up right frickin' there. I need to go down as low as I can. We were just talking with Grant and I got a feeling that this, uh, perfect, this installation that was done here was what I call semi-professional. Like, it looks like it's been paid to have it done because it's a pretty decently cut hole right 
smack dab in the middle between the metal, so that's quite well done. But um, it's still probably not how I would have done it. I would have had it down lower. I don't like, like the way this uh, speaker was uh, screwed in was pretty shoddy. But just the fact that they got the hole done quite right says to me it might have been a professional outfit that did it. So I need to go down as low as I freaking can to avoid this thing. So I'm gonna try go here. And I'm gonna have the speaker offset on a 45 degree angle with the screws in a plus as opposed to a cross. Because if I have it like this, if I put a screw here, it's gonna go straight into the window motor, which is right there. So two screws top and bottom, two screws either side, so uh, a screw either side going into the middle. That's the best way to do it. I'm gonna lower it as much as I can. Lower I can go the better. If I can go low enough to, just enough like that. Like that, I think that's where I think I want it. Just enough to cover up the existing damage apart from those two outer holes which are there. They're quite far out, aren't they? I'm gonna try that. Okay, that's that one. I'm gonna take the door cut off now and, ru and run some new wires. Oh, and also I'm going to line that back up and get these screw holes. Okay, so I got the door cut off. What I'm going to use for the wiring is uh, this stuff here. It's two core sheathed, like about five amp or so wire. This is actually the wire that comes with our central locking motors. But um, we really like using it for running wires into doors because, you know, mainly just because it's shielded. Like, it's got the two cores on the inside. I'll show you. Oh, what? This is a five core one. So it's got like the two wires on the inside as well as this outer sheath. And that's really good just to protecting it when it's in the uh, door jam here. Even though at the front here we have got proper grommets, I'm gonna run through those, but this grommet's got a big split in it anyway. So yeah, this is the stuff we like to use. And I'm just gonna tape it to the wire which is already run through. This passenger side was run uh, pretty well. They ran it through the grommet, but the driver's side for some reason they couldn't figure out how to do it or I don't know but they didn't run it through the grommet they ran around the outside of it which was real nasty you know I should be able to just pull this through there we go that grommet's not even sitting in properly let's fix that okay that's that run through and uh, I'm just going to solder the end of this onto the factory speaker wires which went to the four inch just there and then obviously crimps on this end Cool, there's that one done. Okay, so I've widened the hole up so that the uh, speaker fits through it. But what I want to try and do now is get this little plastic baffle which comes with the speakers. It's about eight millimeters or so thick. I'm hoping it's gonna be all I need to space the speaker out. I'd like to try and get it in between the vinyl and the wood here. Not really sure how I'm gonna go with that, but uh, it's Grant's idea. We'll see how that works. Doesn't work, it's my fault. If it doesn't work, it's your fault, that's right. That, that way I'll be able to, um, what, what can I do? I can thread straight into the upper and lower screw holes, and then the outer ones, what I'll probably uh, end up doing is drilling them out so that the screws can go all the way through this and into the metal. Figured out how I'm gonna get it in. I'm gonna make a cut. So now it does this, and I can like thread it in to the uh, door, like a key ring. Now I've got to remember what way I want to put this, because I'm having it vertically. Probably the best way to do it would be like that, or like that. Probably like that, I think is best. There we go. Just gonna get my screw holes aligned now. Where's my all? That needs to align with that. One lines with that. Sweet as that's that. I think the next step would be to try and put this back on the door and sit the speaker in and see if we've got clearance. Okay, so I've uh, just used the power file and I've gotten rid of all of the excess metal that you would uh, were, that was in there. It was going like down here and on the side as well. And now I'm just going to see if I can get the speaker in the hole. Hopefully, this goes in. Feels like it will. Is it hitting on anything? can't tell. I don't think so. Um, I think it'll probably be alright. Clears the motor. Oh, does it clear this thing though? That's the question. Jeez, I don't know how that's going to go away. That thing is like right there. If I lift it all the way up to the top, I can't feel anything grinding or rubbing on it. So I think we're actually okay. Sweet. I'm going to put a piece of um, foam on that 
rail there anyway just for the sake of it so that if anything is in close contact and any vibrations occur and there's hitting then a piece of foam will you know stop it from rattling. I think we're all good. So now I just gotta screw it in somehow. Okay so I've pretty much got the hole ready for the speaker to go in. I've just been test fitting all my screws to make sure everything is gonna line up good. So the top and bottom one you can see they go through everything. The speaker's gonna go obviously in first. Goes through the baffle and then there's a speed clip there on the wood, so that's gonna sandwich it all together. Same at the top, I'm not sure, no, you're not gonna be able to see it. But then the uh, side ones, they go through metal as well. So that's gonna ultimately what, be what holds it all to the middle of the door. And then the top and bottom one are gonna like kind of sandwich it to the rest of the door card so it can't go anywhere. So that's all good, I can put the speaker in. You can see I put that foam on there just to make it a nice soft landing if anything comes a bit close. And there's my speaker wires which I can, oh I don't need to pull them through anymore there. Yeah, so I can put the speaker in there. So as long as everything stays in place while I take all these screws out. Now, I am putting on a 45 degree angle. I'm gonna put the terminals to that corner there and all the crossover gear is on, oops, on the back here. So that's gonna be around this area, leaving this area up here where the motor is and the uh, door stay nice and clean and, about and open. But I'm gonna put the grill rotated like that. It's gonna be something along those lines. I just have to get all the screws in the right place. Okay, I think that's going into the speed clip. Do them up with the screwdriver for the final tightness. Cool. So now, is there any Hitting. Sounds good. Sounds like the uh, door stay isn't hitting it or anything like that. I think we're all good. Chuck the grill on. Now I'm gonna angle this tweeter. I love how you can angle these uh, Type R tweeters. Angle it up on the 45 degree there. Pop this piece on like that. And this little uh, R series sticker. I gotta stop calling them Type R because they're not actually called Type Rs anymore. They, uh, for some reason Alpine ditched the Type R range and they rebranded them R series. I don't know why, but that's why they no longer say Type on the uh, logo, it just says R. Don't ask me. <laughs> ask John on uh, Five Star Car Stereo later today when they go live why they changed it to R series from, uh, from Type R. But anyway, there we go, that speaker is done. Awesome. I better check that it has some sound. I just realized that uh, this video won't be up until after Five Star goes live. So maybe I'll ask that question for you guys. Okay, well there we go, the uh, front left door is done. Hopefully it won't take me as long to do the front right door. Usually it takes a bit longer once you're doing the first side to figure out how it's all gonna work and then the right side you kinda know what you're doing. So yeah, that's that side done. I'm gonna jump ahead now to where I'm just finishing up on the driver's side because you guys saw how I did everything down in this corner so it's gonna be the exact same on the other side. But yeah, it's looking good. I like it, very nice. So just for you guys, I'm gonna do a time lapse just for this side and I'll see you in a bit. Okay, there we go, there's the uh, front right speaker done. Easy peasy. Now let's move on and do the stereo. You guys know how I do the stereo. It's not gonna take me long. Time lapse it. You've seen me do a stereo before, so here we go. Three, two, one, go.
notice the stereo is done. Just remember, uh, just in case you forgot, it was an Alpine UTE 62 EVT. So it's mechless, no CD player, he doesn't need a CD player, but it's got high voltage pre outs, time alignment, not the, the EQ, all of that good stuff for the good sound quality. Might change up the color a wee bit later on, I'm not sure. So that's done. So I'm done up the front of the car now, so um, I can move on to doing the back speakers. Going pretty good for time, 2.30. So here's the thing that I was rambling about earlier about the Alpine Type R rebrand, and I also just asked um, on, Dean and Fernando just did their Monday live show and I asked John, who's the Alpine rep that they had there with them, some of you guys probably would have seen, um, why they rebranded Alpine from, from Type R, Type R to R series. And I think Dean, if you're watching this, you were right, it's just this red stripe. Because I was saying that, you know, all they've done is change it from Type R to R series, change the product codes around a wee bit, change the grill, this is the old Type R grill here, the trapezium, and this is the new one. They've told us they're sonically better, but I've had a good hard look at both of these speakers and I can't see any physical difference whatsoever. So how can they sound better? The specs are all exactly the same, the sensitivity, the mounting depth, the mounting width, the power ratings, frequency response, everything is the exact same between them. So Dean, if you're watching, like I heard you say something about, oh, there was one time they added the red stripe and it was great because it had a red stripe. I think that might be right. Can you confirm if you're watching, this is the red, I don't know. It seemed to me like a ploy just to change their price a wee bit because when they went to this R series one, it increased our SRP. So I don't know why they did it. And that's, you know, honestly, I'm confident enough to say that there's not no difference really between the speakers, which is why we're installing the new ones in the front and the old ones in the back, and I think they're gonna sound exactly the same as one another. But that's just the thing I was talking about earlier, so if any of you guys know, shed some light because I think it's a, I don't know, just doesn't make sense to me. So anyway, yeah, these are the ones that I just put in the front. These are the ones that are going in the back, but I'm gonna put some of the new grills on just so that it all matches and looks good. Also, they changed their boxes, so uh, their packaging. So this is how they used to package it. Everything was cardboard and recyclable. On the new ones, for some reason, on the new speakers, they decided to package it all in polystyrene, which is not biodegradable. So you've lost points there, Alpine. I used to like companies that use entirely, uh, entirely reusable materials when it comes to packaging, because packaging is something that we have a lot of in this day and age, so you've lost points. Yeah, these are the old grills. And these are the new ones. And here is a set of new Alpine grills. We've got heaps of grills like left over. So I'm gonna put these ones on the back speakers. Don't need those. The speakers. Literally exactly the same as the ones I just put in the front, except it says Type R on the back instead of R series. So yeah, there's my wee rant. I need to try and figure out how to fit these in. Okay guys, so uh, for mounting this speaker in here, what I think I'm gonna do, I'm gonna obviously utilize this hole that's already here and just cut away what I have to. I don't know if you can see it, but I've made a mark just here which shows where the bottom of this stay ends up being. So I just need to make sure that my hole doesn't come into this sort of area and I want to center the speaker horizontally down the middle of this so what I'm going to do is just use this here and I think it lines up pretty well if I use the bottom of this circle here as my um, bottom of my circle and then I'll be able to jigsaw it out or something nothing else important behind here just uh, there is this loom that I have to be careful of but I'll de-snip that when I'm doing the cutting so I just have to make sure that the hole yeah so if I use the bottom of this circle here as the bottom, that's gonna be pretty well perfect, I think. So that's what I'll do. I thought about rotating it and mounting it like this sort of thing so that the uh, speaker uses a plus shaped cross um, screw pattern and having one of them on a speed clip like I have in the front to make it match. But I figured, you know, if I can make four screws go into the middle, why not? There's really no, re and also because if I did that, it means I have to go even lower because the screw might get in contact with the piece which comes through here. So even though it doesn't really match the front, it makes way more sense to have it uh, 
uprighted vertically, you know. All right, so let's line this up and try and center our hole. That looks pretty good to me. I think that's about where I want to cut out. So now I need to mark this, and it's hard because I'm on a rolly chair. There we go. There's the hole I need to cut out. So I'll probably use a jigsaw. I'll put the window back up. I'm gonna unsnip this now so I don't forget. So that gets that loom out of the way. Yep, that's all clear. Alrighty. And what I do to um, make the hole on the door card line up with this, I'll show you in a minute. But basically, I take a random stab, knowing I'm pretty well gonna get it in this hole, and then I use my knife, and I cut down until I feel metal and I do the same horizontally and then that gives me like the most outer points and I can line this up on it and cut the circle. You'll see. Here we go. There's my hole. Just double check it's... Yep, that's good. Sweet as. So what I need to do now mark the approximate center. So if I use that there as a vertical center and that hole there as a vertical center, put the door card back on. Now all I have to do, up from here and across from there, that's around, that there's around about the center of my hole. Just poke a hole through. Try this knife, it's a bit sharper. So now I know that that point there is the edge of the circle. That point there is the edge of the circle. And that point there is the edge of the circle. So I take this off. And now what I'm able to do is uh, line these three points up with the edge of my circle thing here. Draw it and cut it out. Now with any luck, that circle that I've drawn there should line up with the one that I've cut there. That's right. Looks like I got it in the right place. All right, I'm gonna go cut this out. All right, so let's see if my holes, the hole that I've now cut, whoop, lines up with the hole that I cut in the middle. Just to see if I've got my methods right. So you guys can't see. That's pretty. Perfect, if you ask me. That is right on point. Yes, that looks good. Nicely done, James. Next question is, let's put the window down and try and put the speaker in without the baffle first and then see if adding this gives us the depth that we need. That's where the window goes all the way down to. Let's see here. Oh, That is something. I believe that is the magnet hitting on this thing. Yep, so I think what we need to do is add this and we'll be good. So I'm gonna just do it the same way I did for the front. So I've already put the split in it. I'm gonna try and thread this into here. And the tricky part is that is glued down. I wonder if we can unglue it, can't we? Now what's the best way to align it? I've been putting it this way, so. Possibly like that is the best way to align it, I think. Yes, because that way there's nothing too close to this edge. Let's try to get this in here. This, uh, this panel was glued down a lot better than the front ones were. There we go, just gotta get the finger up in there. Oh, this bottom cap is glued down with real sticky stuff. It's rotate a long way, doesn't it? Like that. Yeah. There, you go. there you go, I think I got that in. That'll work. Just gonna make sure I've got it vertical. Where's my ruler? Oh, sweet, looks like I've already got it pretty well vertical. Sweet as. Mark some holes. So now I just need to drill them out. There we go. There's my hole cut and my four, my four screw holes drilled and checked and everything's gonna be good. Just gotta do some wiring now. Got some of the wiring done. So um, first of all, I found in the loom down here, the wiring for the factory 
rear left speaker which is in the boot so that's going to run up to here and it's going up to the connection for the rear left door which you'll see I have actually disconnected and pulled back through so there's the grommets and everything and then I've got myself a piece of that shielded cable I was talking about before loomed up with the factory loom it's going to pop out there and the connection is going to happen right in there Now those can crimp, or I can just solder them actually. Might just solder those wires to those wires. Yep. Okay, that's the wiring done. All soldered up. So now let's put this speaker in. You being mean, Grant. Okay, angle the tweeter up. Put the cover on and sticker. Been broken into five times and I think I might do an alarm now. <laughs> oh really? Okay there we go guys, back left door done, moving on to the right hand side, it'll be another time lapse and get it all done nice and quick, but it's looking good, I'm happy with it. Looks nice, not going anywhere. And it doesn't rub on the door stay so that's good, in fact it's much lower than the door stay when you look at it. So it's all good. That one's done. Oh, I can't close that yet. I haven't put this trim back on yet. I probably could, but um, for the rear right one, for the wiring for that, unfortunately they what they did for these rear speakers is the factory wiring runs both of the sides. Both the channels are down this side here. So under here where I got my um, where I got my rear left speaker wires, the rear right ones were also there. So what I did was I chopped that. This auto fix would re would resume and I soldered on a nice big long bit of speaker wire so that I can run it probably under the seat I think, back forward and then up through the door. Because what it normally does is runs all the way to the back of the car across and to that point there. And getting the wires from the speaker there is a mission because this whole huge panel has to come off. So I'm just going to probably run this big long speaker wire I've attached under the seat or under the carpet that's under the seat and then go back up and put some of that sheathed to core on it. Cool. That's all four speakers done. Oh, happy birthday to them. There's the red okay. right one. Cool. She's like, thanks. No present, just <laughs> a shout out. <laughs> ZM's Jason PJ. The best bits. Charlie. You know what it is. When you hear that. Uh, just have a quick listen before we say goodbye to it. I would Every single time I install a set of Type R's, I'm always like, wow, they're actually really, really good, aren't they? They're so, I want to say loud, but they're not like painfully loud, but they're like definitely, I don't know. There's a lot of mid bass with Type R's. They're really good with mid bass. And that is going to be it for today, guys. I think the customer is going to be thoroughly impressed. Well, there we go guys, the uh, 
surf is all done good to go Our customers happy so yeah that's been my video to, for today i hope you guys have enjoyed it let me know what you thought of my install in the comments remember to check out my facebook page support me on patreon all of that choose to be happy and i will catch you in the next video and thank you guys for all of the um you know kind words and awesome support you guys have been giving me on that you know bleh, hit the fan video you guys are awesome this is why i love you thank you kakitano